Hey, hey, hey. It's your weekly corner, Spady. I'm here with the whole gang. I'm here with Nick. Hi. Yulia. Hello. Uma. <laughs> Hi. And myself, Kira. <laughs> Uh, and we are joined uh, uh, today by Matt Chrisman of Chapo Trap House and Hell and Earth fame. How you doing, Matt? I'm good. How are you guys? Good. It's late. We've had pizza. We're mm-hmm. opening beers. It's pretty nice. It's the morning over there for you. Do you <laughs> yes, it is. Pizza? <laughs> Breakfast pizza. Breakfast pizza. Yeah, that's a that's a typical American thing, right? Yeah. That is true. That is actually a thing at Rock. There used to be a morning sports show on espn here called cold pizza Cold pizza yeah, yeah. oh oh okay all right yeah, that makes sense i really thought you were gonna say morning sports pizza no no, no. <laughs> you would have before your run no i don't know though who would watch it though because you obviously s- sit and watch the like you know eight hours of sports center that are <laughs> on repeat you know from five till noon but um yeah, no. Um, although our days are going well, uh, Europe is is not. No, nope. you know, a little roundup <laughs> of the week. Apparently, uh, I don't know what's what's the one thing that then really grinded my gears this week was that then the Dutch, not the Dutch, the Dutch and the Danes, pretty much the same. They're yeah. weird. <laughs> and they're in the north. Uh, decided that you know holidays suck. Yeah, you know yeah. that uh, you 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 little piggies want to work so that then they can you know collect more taxes from you so that they can then fund the Danish military, which yep. is apparently a thing I found. I did not I, know they had one. Of course yeah. they do. <laughs> I know yeah. that the Danes actually are one of the European countries that sent the most substantial <clears throat> um, military support to Afghanistan. Mm. Oh, them yeah. and Lithuania. Them and Lithuania. <laughs> Lithuania wanted it so bad. Is that how, what's yes. his name, Rasmussen became the head of NATO afterwards? Or like, I would not doubt it. Uh, yeah. Like, he was, I mean, before yeah. Stoltenberg, he was the, you know, big daddy of NATO. And when daddy of NATO, I do mean he's actually a very handsome man. I'm like, Jens <laughs> Stoltenberg. I'm still of the theory that whenever we want, like, an international <laughs> institution to have, like, the semblance that we're the good guys or we're like here to be nice or whatever, we put like a Nordic person in charge yes. of it. Yeah. And they they, you they find do out- the Nobel Prize. It must be yeah, nice. Exactly. They do the it Peace Prize. Nice. They, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that the Nobel Peace Prize is done by a NATO member. Um, <laughs> feels great. But yeah, so for anyone who hasn't been paying attention to this, I mean, why would you? Denmark has used the excuse of the Russian invasion of Ukraine to get rid of a public holiday mm-hmm. um, oh my God. because we can't afford to have a public holiday anymore. We need to buy more guns for Denmark. Um, and this pissed off everyone because not only did it piss off who you would expect, which is like, you know, the unions and stuff, which are quite strong. It also pissed off a lot of really far right wing Christians because it was a oh, Christian. Yeah. It's, bank a, holiday. it's because it's prayer oh, day. It's prayer, it's prayer day. day. Yeah. Yeah. Where you, you spend all day praying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I guess <laughs> better than working. So. <laughs> So you mean it's the day that then me as a practicing Muslim can, you know, openly pray in Denmark? No, it's with Denmark. Milk. That's not allowed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, on the weird disease island that we are storing you on. Uh, yeah. Uh, the Danes. Anyway, um, I think the only other, like, shitty piece of news before we get into the main thing is that it's now all pretty much confirmed that we are getting a CDU. Uh, oh, I don't like, want to talk about this again. We already talked about this last episode. We, didn't, like, talk we did not. It. We talked about MILF Manor. Yeah, okay, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, yeah, Germany. Berlin has a conservative been, government, pretty much. It's our MILF Manor. It's, it's our, yeah, yeah. It's Giffey and... Her son. <laughs> Kai Wegner. <laughs> yeah, Wegner. Her, son. her adult son, Kai Wegner. Uh, yeah, so on a campaign of you get to fuck your car, mostly, and um, Muslims shouldn't be allowed to have fireworks, the CDU is now in charge of Berlin. Um, on the lie that they would be like the steady hand of government and they would make Berlin finally profitable, even though I believe it was their last government that bankrupted yes. the state. Yes, <laughs> with the like fake bank they set up that was all their friends and they just gave a lot of money to, and then fucked off. I will never fully understand how then the thing I continuously say on this show that Germany is Italy, like the way that Germans think that Italy is. Oh, like the levels of corruption. <laughs> yeah, but and... if it like, but like it's, it's in, like I mean, it, it. One part of it makes me think in the sense that it's like, oh, okay, yeah, just Germans, just you know, just thrive, you know, and 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 wish no for for nothing more than to just continuously vacation in italy or that they were italian every person that you'll meet in in europe will be, or germany will be like oh yeah insert city that is very not close to italy is the most northern city of italy which is like some people will say munich which is like that's oh, a stretch and then people will be like it's nuremberg and you're like 
that is two and a half hours north of Munich. I don't think Italy is that big. <laughs> but then you just realize it's that, like, they use the excuse just to continuously have the vibe. Mm. And I think that the politics, you know, the continuous just money laundering, corruption, this and that and that is also another way of them justifying is that they're all like, you know what, island boy life forever, as we've also <laughs> talked about. I do get the impression, though, that um, the Italian corrupt conservative governments and stuff like that are fucking more. Oh, yeah, of course. Probably. The Germans. Although, I mean, like, come on, the, for, the health minister who told, like, who told the Italians, you know, COVID might be a problem, said it was only a problem if you were, like, making out for longer than 15 minutes. Yeah, if you made <laughs> out for longer than 15 minutes, that's how COVID spreads. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> and according to Italian science, that may be true. God damn it. All right. <laughs> so, this is a great transition to the... To the Thirty Years' War, yes. Yeah, German, to the... German trauma. No, yeah, German trauma. Yeah. What, if, what if a German was a Catholic? Heilige Römische Ooh. Reich, Deutsche Nation, bring it back. Italy and Germany, hand in hand. Everyone. Oh, no. <laughs> you know that always was great throughout history. <laughs> Everyone in Munster kissing for more than 15 minutes. Um... <laughs> no, we're talking about we're talking about actually this is Kieran's chart of hot and cold Catholics. Yes. But yeah. what if those cold Catholics were even colder and then the extra cold Catholics were a complete different religion? <laughs> that looks really similar. <laughs> so Matt, I, I have a I have a, a understanding of European Catholics, which is basically centered around Mardi Gras and what you do on Mardi Gras, because for us Irish and like Polish people and stuff like that, we we don't really go out into the street and celebrate. We mostly just like stay indoors and eat a lot. And Catholicism is about like shame, being miserable. Shame. It's kind of like, like hating yourself, <laughs> being miserable and yeah, hating yourself. Whereas like I feel like for Southern Europe, for the Italians, it's they more focus on the like I can do whatever I want as long as I say sorry afterwards if I like confess it, and then like, yeah. Catholicism really only works uh, as a vibe if the sun's out. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Uh, Jesus always did say, "Sun's out, guns out." Yeah. <laughs> like that. That like Prot Protestantism is was basically invented by cold, miserable northern German, northern Europeans who just could not handle the idea of of Catholicism because they just did not have access to the same levels of of partying. <laughs> that the uh, that the Italians who had invented the thing had, yeah, yeah. The, the, the like before the we'll get into it now, but I guess like the beginning of the Thirty Years' War, the main like one of the main Catholic powers was the Spaniards. I mean, look at all the oh sense, yeah, sense, like, and they were great. Oops. Yeah, no, but look even the beginnings of the, the Catholic stuff they Church. did in in the Netherlands. Oh yeah, oh. I don't I don't claim them. <laughs> I wasn't the, sorry. Like I mean, the thing of 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 I mean, just look at the you know I mean, talk about sexiness. Even the origins of Catholicism, you know, I even mean, the Inquisition. Not the, no, no, the, I'm talking about the, <laughs> the robes. robes right. they were oh my wearing. god, those robes! Jesus. You know, all right. I we were always... listening to Nick's sexy origins. Sexy origins. So, you know, the sexiest thing <laughs> of, of Catholicism is that's right. The Nicene Creed. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you know, so on, so on, so forth. But it was like, I mean, come on, it was like written in Turkey and they had like a big, like, you know, multiple year long, you know, get together for it, finding so out what is this whole Catholicism thing. And I feel like exploring each other's well, bodies. Yeah, the you know? origins of the Catholic Church even <laughs> start in a sexy place, which is, you know, modern day Turkey. Like, <laughs> it's it's warm. Place. It's sexy. It's in the, you know, this is in the period of time also when then like, you know, it's slowly turning into the Byzantine Empire, I guess, with this is what, 200, 300 AD, right? No, it's still too early. Yeah. Anyway, Don't trend, look at me. <laughs> anyway <laughs> Europe forward. is changing. <laughs> Catholicism's yes. beginnings even start, though, in like a sexy island town. Not island, but like island a coastal town. town. I mean, island boys. Yeah. <laughs> island boys. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, one of the reasons we have you on, Matt, is because you, you are doing uh, um, this show with. With Chris Wade, uh, um, Hell on Earth about the Thirty Years' War and the Reformation as well as the kind of like backdrop to the Thirty Years' War, and I am kind of curious as to how you kind of like came upon the Thirty Years' War, like why you found it fascinating, why you think it's like worthy of a of a, a ten part I believe series. Well, it was suggested to me by Chris. We were looking to do another project together after we'd done our Hell of Presidents show, and he thought that it was a very interesting topic that had never really been covered on, in a podcast format before. And uh, I thought that's true too, because I had read uh, C.V. Wedgwood's 
Thirty Years' War a number of years previously, and, and I, it stuck with me because it's a very well written book, and it really did bring the era alive. And then, but once we started looking into it and started doing my research, the uh, narrative that emerged was was really startling because you see the death of one system, the feudal order in Europe, and the uh, emergence of capitalism to to deal with the, this crisis that feudalism couldn't contain, and the forces unleashed by that uh, crisis moment are very recognizable to anyone living in the early 21st century at a time when capitalism is in a similar crisis uh, and is creating its own uh, superseding model. Uh, pr- one of the ma- main things that, that struck me is how uh, the advent of mass literacy was creating an entirely new form of subjectivity uh, and how that's very similar to how we are being reshaped by the internet at the current moment. The, you're, you're basically talking about the idea that um, people are just kind of like believing whatever they kind of like want to believe. Uh, uh, um, and this, like, this is pretty, like, this starts with like print. Uh, um, and then you're kind of like talking about how this maybe relates to QAnon and everyone kind of living in their own various realities. Is that fair to some? I mean, that's part of it. I mean, it, it for one thing, just having a literate public means that people's imaginative conceptions of themselves and who, how they relate to the world changes. And they're able to – that they take these syst- structure systems of, of symbols and create these imagined communities out of them that previously would not have been possible to keep in your head uh, when life was much more locally prescribed. But yeah, then part of that, it becomes – uh, is this illusion that takes hold when the symbols that we encounter uh, in our printing material gain uh, a similar sense of reality to the world that we observe around us. And and then we find ourselves, un, without even knowing it, building uh, realities out of the air uh, because we have conflated these two things. Uh, in fact, there actually is sort of a proto QAnon during the Thirty Years' War or preceding the Thirty Years' War that has a real influence in the course of it. When uh, these anonymous pamphlets uh, that are claimed to have been written by groups of learned, godly men called the Rosicrucians, uh, claim to be working behind the scenes to bring about a final confrontation with Catholicism in Europe and the final overthrow of superstition and tyranny to be replaced by a uh, a new uh, emp- Christendom of light and, and, and rationality and reason. And th- these books were consumed in a lot of the places that became uh, flashpoints for ferment and resistance to the Holy Roman Empire, which is what kicks off the Thirty Years' War. Right, so... I think the main thing I wanted to talk about today, though, is because we have Yulia here. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Someone born of these, you yeah. know. In these, born these... in the land of Luta. Exactly. <laughs> You're not from Witt- uh, Wittenberg. No, I'm not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, what is okay it? But, like, a lot of the shit that you talk about in, yeah, in, yeah, yeah. in Hell on Earth does, like, take place in Yulia's neck of the woods. Um in my life. In your life. Yeah, I'm living the 30 years war every day. I was day. socialized, a Lutheran <laughs> Protestant. <laughs> and um, I kind of wanted to talk about like the legacy and like how this thing is understood in Germany because um, like in Ireland, it's basically not talked about it very quickly. Like we in school, it's just like, yeah, Martin Luther was pissed and then the English got some notions. <laughs> Was basically <laughs> yeah. how it's kind of taught, and we have to very focus, very much focus on like the Reformation in England, because uh, then then they did stuff to us. But then, yeah, like how is this like taught of? Like how is this like handled in schools and stuff? Here is uh, I mean, I guess my first, um, I mean, in 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 elementary school, you just like you know, uh, it depends on if you're like in a Protestant region. Hmm. Of course, you you know everything. Um, like about the Reformation Day because you go and get candy. It's like oh Halloween basically. basically. Candy on Reformation Day? <laughs> yes, what? we get candy on Reformation what? Day. Why? But like you, Luther, you go, I don't know. Oh, okay. Because but you, you go get, knocking on people's we doors. We go knocking and we sing uh, Martin Luther songs. <gasps> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
Can you sing the song for us? <laughs> I yeah, I found I recently only when I looked more into this, I found out that my mom, the songs she taught me, is a mix. It's like kind of like a remix. It's a medley mm. of different <laughs> Martin Luther songs. songs. Oh, yeah. Some of them are not even related to Martin Luther, so I don't know where she got that from. <laughs> but it's basically in Plattdeutsch, which is interesting because I come from North Westphalia, yeah. but I come from the northern east part of North Westphalia, which is basically Lower Saxony. So I'm basically North Northern. German, that yeah. is why I'm Protestant, mm -hmm. because all the other parts, like even Paderborn, which is very close to us, is Catholic. My yeah. dad is Catholic. This is why. <gasps> I know. <laughs> Are they going to have Protestant together? Uh, yeah. Yeah. There was actually a problem when he started like working at a fucking um, hospital. For, sorry. Fucking hospital. <laughs> what did the this hospital do? <laughs> this fucking place And it's called, the place is called Bethel. And it's a Protestant, it's a Lutheran co hospital. Oh, so okay. yeah, they had to kind of like ask him some questions <gasps> before he could even join a, this hospital. Oh my God. See, this I country know. is not so different. No. Yeah. <laughs> Kira feels no, at home right now. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But in school, actually, like, okay, you know, it's it's first it's the stuff that you do, you know, as a Protestant going for Martin Luther singing. Um, but then later... You know, when when you're uh, preparing for your confirmation, you're watching the Luther movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a Luther movie. There's a Luther movie, and it's uh, hot Luther and hot Luther. Hot Luther, Who's yeah. Luther? Ah, shit, I forgot who played plays him. It's an guy. American movie, actually. Is it? Is, it? Is that yeah. the one with Joseph Fiennes? Yes, I think that's the one. Yes. <gasps> yes. Yeah, he is hot. Yeah, he, I will. It's in yeah. the name. I will. Yeah, he, uh, Luther was hot w when he was a young monk. Uh, yes, but exactly. then he once he got married, he got s real fat. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's interesting because he was a law student, and then yeah. he was saved by God from a thunderstorm. You know a thunderstorm. Oh yeah, and yeah, then yeah, he yeah. promised his life to God, and that he is how called, all of this yeah, shit yeah. happened. Yeah. yeah, and the 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 it does make sense that that would be German Halloween because the the Wittenberg <laughs> Cathedral nailing happens on October thirty first. Yeah, uh, but interestingly, like that wasn't really uh, considered the beginning of the Reformation until the hundred year anniversary in sixteen eighteen uh, yes. yeah. or sixteen seventeen when uh, the Elector of the Palatinate funded a. German wide series of festivals and parades and commemorative events and uh, minted little commemorative uh, coins to send out to everybody to nice. calling that the hundredth years anniversary as a way to brand the L whole Lutheran Reformation with his uh, signature uh, as part of his goal to to claim power in the Holy Roman Empire, which of course would have been hilarious to Luther because the uh, elector of the Palatinate at that point was Calvinist. Uh, and there's, mm. if there was anything that Ca Lutherans hated more than Catholics at that point, it was Calvinists. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Still do. Um, but like, okay, so you actually, uh, you did mention something I wanted to bring up earlier, which is you said, you said the dirty word, you said Palatinate. Um, I do like, <laughs> It is, it is, because, like, I was I was walking my dogs, listening to Hell on Earth, muttering under my breath, yes, yes, when you guys are having the conversation of, I hate saying the word palatinate. Oh. We arrived at that conclusion ages ago as well. We've just been using the German name for yeah. it. Which yeah. Is? What's the German word? Falz. Oh, Falz. Falz. Yeah. Yeah. Falz. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, Falz. Yeah, Falz. Falz. Yeah. Well, I know Falz. these things. Why am I asking these questions? <laughs> yeah. okay, so well, I didn't know. So for the, for the listener. Me. And for Uma, yeah. Oh, yeah <laughs> because, like, I'm... I'm I'm like someone, I, I can't speak German. And every time I see Rhineland Palatinate, I'm always going I'm not to say saying Rhineland Palestine. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Rhineland Palestine. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway. Um, and also, I do love this kind of tradition of watching movies because my memory of my first going to like a mixed school in Ireland, which means Protestant and Catholic. <laughs> mixed school. <laughs> I, I know. I know. But this is what they were called. And, oh, uh, which is basically all the mixed schools in Ireland are Protestant schools that eventually agreed law of large to numbers. Take about, to take Catholics. To take Catholics, yeah. <laughs> um, Just for the money. <laughs> <laughs> While I had to do my confirmation, the, the Anglicans next door were fucking watching Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. <laughs> well, you were getting a lecture about how Harry Potter is it's the devil's. You know, is the devil's you know, Are yeah. Catholics like that? I, we were not allowed to even utter I the do. word Harry Potter at school. Oh no, no, no! Like European, like Irish, yeah, yeah. like European no, no. Catholics do not. Give uh, shit yeah, 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 that. no, no. American Catholics are psychopaths because they wish that they were Protestants. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, at the end of the day, of course. It doesn't ever work. But they don't wish that they were Protestants. They wish they were Calvinists. Wasn't they this also what the war like, was about? 
boycott. No, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Who can watch Harry Potter? The United Potter? States has failed the, the Europeans in every way, including in, in the most important regard of Catholicism. Yeah. <laughs> so. But then, okay, so then I'm, I'm kind of curious about... Uh, um, how this is kind of remembered in German popular imagination and talking about that. I found the adorable Playmobil set uh, of, well, uh, of Martin Luther King. No Martin play- Luther King. <laughs> oh, God, God damn it, every time. The He's wrong not Martin Luther. To us. <laughs> Martin Luther is not important to us. Martin Luther King is... Okay, anyway. <laughs> in Ireland. Hey, uh, um, no, Martin, the Playmobil set of Martin Luther. No play- I looked as far as I could. No Playmobil sets of the 30 Years War. <laughs> Might be too much for the kids. <laughs> the plague and, and yeah. the mercenaries <laughs> running around looting your town. There is oh, there is one though. I, uh, a friend of mine found this. He was looking through the Playmobil sets. There is one Playmobil set that is of the uh, the Bohemian executioner who oh. cut the heads off of all of the Bohemian yes. rebels. I have seen after the seen? defeat yes. of the Protestants at White Mountain. <laughs> The one with the black, black hood yes. on? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen you it. You and I have seen this one. Oh, I always asked myself what, he, yeah. what this guy I was I thought it was about. just a happy executioner. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, just a normal kid's toy. The yeah, happy yeah, yeah. executioner. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, that's uh, a specific guy that that's based on. Yeah. Who, he, he went through four axe heads during the course of the day because they kept getting uh, dull, oh cutting the heads off of the bohemian These princes. These thick necks. <laughs> Too many. Yeah. <laughs> Oh wow! Oh my goodness! Or like, I mean, a really cool Playmobil set would be uh, which? Which uh, is it? The Münchner Dom? Uh, oh yeah, with the the, the cages full of the, oh, the, the Anabaptists. Yeah, that would the, be awesome. The Wiedertäufer ones. Yeah, yeah, that is a beautiful one. Yeah, yeah that'd be a really cool Playmobil set <laughs> with tiny little cages. Yeah, tiny, <laughs> yeah. That was one of the like the very first time that then actually that then because Yulia mentioned this to me and we went to Münster for the first time and then you know. Like oh ho oh, oh, ho look point up there and then there's like I mean the like they're still there like, <laughs> they are still they there take them down. no and I didn't believe you You Germans have issues like, I mean, no I'm sorry there, there was there was some like there were some like state like city officials or monks who were just like we have to power through the first ten years of the bad smell that will go away <laughs> until it's all dissolved and into human mush it. it's some cost fallacy I'm to be fair this. the rest of Europe probably smelled pretty shitty as well oh, too. Yeah. you could hide it you could have the smell of a dead body pretty well in Münster Ooh. city center they literally <laughs> had that New York Times headline ages ago of like scientists have figured out what Europe smelled like in the middle ages I'm like yeah, death death awful mud uh, why would they want to know that <laughs> that was like I was reading a history of Berlin the city and yeah. they, were, they were mentioning the sense of like uh moving up in German history of like what it smelled like during like World War Two in here of like oh. people on like rations. Uh, oh and Germans hate showering to begin with. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh uh yeah so it was there there were very uh, 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 very detailed yeah. accounts of people describing how like the Uban smelled. Oh no oh if it smells now imagine <laughs> forty five. Oh uh, my imagine god imagine how it's not here during the thirty years of war. <laughs> the Uban <laughs> imagine how the Uban <laughs> Cards. <laughs> Just carriages. Um, but yeah, back to the Playmobil figure. The, yeah. This was made um, for the 500 year anniversary mm. of the Reformation. <laughs> when was the executioner made? <laughs> that we have to a, get him out first. That's a good question. Does he have like a little sign in the corner, like yeah. a little like pack? Historical education is the, definitely the only way you can make. The Does it come with a little toy? booklet that describes the execution? <laughs> so we were yeah. little yeah. biography. That was yeah. So that was the fun thing about listening to the series because like I kind of knew how a lot of things ended because I kind of know which countries are which religion, uh, uh, which <laughs> denomination of Christianity. Except for whenever you talk about Bohemia, because I'm like, the Czechs are all atheists now. They're like, yeah, but they're yeah. Protestants. The Soviet Union, uh, um, like, no religion thing worked yeah. with the Czechs, and they just, yeah, yeah. Jan Hus was their guy, no? Yes. Yeah, yeah the Hussites. Yeah. Yeah, but. Uh, His goose the, uh... was cooked. <laughs> I mean, they had the whole fun idea of defenestration, which I still think is one of the greatest words ever. Oh, yeah. It's a great word. It's um, just throwing from... a bunch of people out of a window. Throwing a guy out of a window. Oh, you have to, yeah. Anyway. 500 yes. year anniversary is also yes. 
That is the time when Germans uh, discovered that uh, Luther was actually anti-Semitic. <laughs> yeah. What, like what, 2016? Yeah, it's 17. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's interesting because um, that is something that was never taught in no, school. No, of course not. Why would it Nobody be? talks about his <laughs> cute little script oh. of the Jewish people and the lies um, <laughs> or like any other of his uh, publications where he is very anti-Semitic. Mm. Um, but it's actually interesting because it was the first time that the uh, Protestant church says, okay, this is important that we actually talk about this. Um, there was a statue made for Luther during that time and someone like um, put like paint on it, threw paint on it. And right. so actually the 500 uh, un anniversary, not anniversary, yeah. <laughs> anniversary was, yeah, it, it um, I think it was the first time that it came like to a public like awareness that this dude could be problematic. The <laughs> handsome guy from the movie. <laughs> yeah, even hot people can be anti Semitic, we found out. Yeah. It's unfortunate. <laughs> also, Barack Obama's last time he ever came to Germany and spoke was at the uh Reforma five hundredth anniversary of the Reformation. Just it was the it was who? actually Barack Obama. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It was a super <laughs> big deal, remember? Because yeah. it was that it was his first and only time he had come back since he'd been president, yeah. and like he like Did like he talk was about all like, Martin Luther. I don't know what he talked I about. I suppose so, no. but oh, what? he was, you have to at least mention it. Yeah, was I he mean, invited he was like, for this? Is he <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> was he invited? Yeah, he was. Remember, that? he met with Mary. <laughs> no, he just showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. <laughs> How do you not remember? Like all of like Mitta was closed off because. So oh yeah, I do like, remember. I do remember. Angie, I love you. Glad to be back. <laughs> Just, like makes his opinion known on transubstantiation yeah. or whatever. Yeah, there is only one God, the Father. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But going back to like how it is remembered in Germany and and how Germans feel about Luther, um, it's interesting because Luther was actually like used in many cases when it came to war efforts or when it came to the uh, national socialism, like the Nazis, mm. because in his you know them <laughs> yeah you know those <laughs> good try to say like the actual anyway it you know no, Nazis, Nazis, no, no, you know? Okay, um. Yeah, because uh, this script that I just men this uh, mentioned, this publication, was actually, mm -hmm. uh, it has like this passage in it where it says like, uh, you should uh, burn down the synagogues and destroy the houses of Jewish people. And this is what later, after the Reichsprogrammnacht, a lot of people like based their actions on and mm -hmm. said like, yeah, man, Luther said it. We're so. just good Protestants. Yeah, we're just good yeah. Protestants over here. And <laughs> the, the Catholic Germans didn't need much convincing either. <laughs> Just like yeah, really yeah. <laughs> they don't need like a Luther to base yeah. it. <laughs> no, they're just like, look at the Catholic kings of Spain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. They yeah. did so well in 14. Did it first. <laughs> yeah. I mean, now they still have Mel Gibson for that, so it's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but it's interesting because you see this rhetoric coming up like every time Germany goes to war uh, or mm. German Fürstentümer or whoever like yeah. um, because in um, during the first or before the first world war um, it was actually there was an effort by the war parties to um, to denounce all the myths about the 30 year um, war and that it was such a terrible time they said like okay people are like kind of overreacting you know <laughs> <laughs> so it's totally fine to go back to war but on the other hand other uh, efforts were to um, compare like people like Hindenburg to Luther and saying like okay we have to join this war because we don't want foreign troops in this country again so we don't want the devastation of the 30 year war yeah. in Germany again so we have to go to war Mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. and they compared Hindenburg to Luther and saying he the words that he's saying is it's just like you know Luther speaking to the people and he, they kind of like, <laughs> like believe me I was there <laughs> <laughs> I was there back then so they kind of like turned him into like the great Protestant um, commander mm -hmm. okay weird <laughs> <laughs> but like there's there's one thing that we kind of like um we chatted about just before recording that I, I want to talk about now which is uh, um is the 30 years war being germany's first inflation scare <laughs> and people suggest that yes <laughs> yeah and um matt if you don't know 
in modern German politics, the 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 fear of runaway inflation mostly this thing that can totally happen in modern day Germany that yeah. I'm so afraid of every day is 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 basically the excuse for why we can't have nice things, um, why our internet still sucks, uh, <laughs> why the. Bond is going to be rebuilt in what 2070 they changed it to today other they're not like putting any money into the train system ever yeah again. why we all still pay cash yeah. and not with cards yeah. <laughs> oh yeah that, that's the great one yeah you can't use cars for anything uh, um mostly i the thing that's often referenced is the the inflation in like the interwar period yes yeah that's the one that's referenced but this is supposedly goes deeper mm-hmm. and I'm not sure if you've covered it in the Ten Years' War, but like in thirty the, years' war, in the Three Years' War, in, in <laughs> Hell on Earth. Uh, um, but like, what is the inflation scare? Like, what what happened? Yeah, we talk about this. So, in the very early days of the war, every uh, every principality had this imperative to pay for military mobilization, and that costs money. So, uh, there was uh, had for years been a practice that disreputable types could do uh, in the margins of the German monetary economy that became central in a, in a way to, to raise funds. Uh, so there were, two ty- there were two types of currency that were minted in the Holy Roman Empire at this time. You had the large gold uh, coins that were used for large-scale transactions, and those were the minting of those was highly regulated, and, and the patents to mint it were held uh, by a few, uh, only a, a few principalities. But for smaller day-to-day transactions carried out with smaller uh, denomination silver coins, there was much less regulation. It was also a, a, a less profitable endeavor because the 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 denominations were so low that the costs that went into minting the coins often didn't end up being recovered by their production. The way you could make up for that is to cut the edges off of the coins and reduce the uh, silver, the the precious metal content of the coins, uh, and then take the the clippings and put them, turn them into more money. And that was something that was that happened at the at the margins of the German economy for decades. But with this new uh, imperative, this new monetary demand, all of a sudden mints started springing up all over Germany. And it became practice to go to a principality uh, across a border, uh, collect the coins with X amount of silver and then bring them back, clip them off, then send those clip coins out uh, and exchange them for more good coins uh, and the whole and while this was happening all over the place, all of these principalities were doing it. It was a way for speculators to make a bunch of money very quickly, uh, and it led to this massive inflation to the point where there were just piles of useless coins lying in city streets. Kids would just play in, and the <laughs> monetary economy almost collapsed. There were food riots uh, and uh, unrest, and it lasted for a, a couple of years. It was called the Kipper und Wipperzeit. Yeah, Kipper uh, Wipperzeit. Yeah. yeah, the which <laughs> referred to the clipping of the coins and then the whipping of the uh, the scales used to determine the weight of coins, mm-hmm. uh, and it it was yeah very traumatic for the uh, German economy, and eventually they had to impose a new uh, regulatory settlement to get the bad coins out of circulation, but it took a long time. And uh, uh, Wallenstein, who ends up becoming one of the chief military leaders of the war, uh, he's able to make his fortune that allows him to put up huge amounts of money to the uh, emperor and to raise armies to put in the field uh, because he uses debased coins to buy up a lot of the Bohemian estates that had been confiscated after the defeat of the rebels. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that happened, yeah. <laughs> but um in the in the in the regards that I guess of I guess cuz we're having the inflation trauma. No, yeah, this, the, <laughs> the the discussion in the sense of that this is all 
because there's always in these things of that's such a ridiculous story to me of that then so just like very much of a unique form of how a specific era yeah like, specific era of history especially of how specific like modern it's like when libertarians like jack off for the, over the idea of like you know uh uh, uh um your currency based on like backed on gold hmm. completely unaware of that one that the gold standard only existed for like 18 years it was horribly unstable which is why we are off it and two it was like before that was like the bimetallic system which was even more unstable because the united states thought it was a crazy cool idea to like you know if you're not going to bake it back it on gold you could also back it on silver so then it caused everyone to then panic buy one or the other over and over and over for like a 10 year 20 year period and they realize oh no this is a horrible way to but there's never a discussion in american you know like of the Amer- oh the american trauma of this or that or that hmm. because of stupid monetary policy of the past given yes okay the united states has never had runaway inflation the south has i guess if you look at the like the southern economy but still like i never buy those excuses because like germany's monetary system is not of you know you can't I'm not going to go around and start clipping euros and then like no, using I, those euro bits to then make more euros. Now I heard Matt there. This sounds like a good scheme. I'm I agree. This. <laughs> yeah. If this you is if, go, if it's the yeah. if it's for the 15th some kip out yeah. outside. Yeah, like every every euro has like a different like picture on the back of it. So yeah. I just go to Italy and grab one of those ones with like the Da Vinci painting on it, and I come back here and get the ones with the eagles on it, and I just start clipping. Yeah. Them. The only <laughs> thing I've actually realized that in Germany is the same thing of that is people freakishly trying to make insane amounts of money off of like misprints on euros that they'll ask for like 40 grand for like, like yeah, yeah yeah and maybe not that much but like two three grand for like whatever but that's just dumb nerdy but yeah but like that's the that's the entire base of like ftb voters is, yeah. yeah people who want to the, the the twitch streamer who made all his money like selling pokemon cards but th- but that's like because this the thing is that then while i never knew that this was a thing of modern german trauma that gets brought up to then when you and yulia were like nerding out about how this is actually a thing that then is still brought up in modern like what 500 years later yeah you then actually can convince the german population oh you're this way about money because because of the 30 30 years years war (laughs) not because you're fucking insane (laughs) you know not because your country loves money laundering and you think that you know oh why would a country want only cash payments Uh, excuse me we prefer calling it kipper yeah (laughs) i don't believe it this way (laughs) so like is is like how I, i just this is the thing is that I don't understand how these end up in like a modern German context, but they do like the World War Two one or the not World, but the interwar period. The interwar yeah. period one I yeah. understand because at least it's like okay, that's that part of history where like Germany's like oh, that's our like you know those are our those are our like Your grandparents were maybe alive for that maybe yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah now not anymore but it's like those were like Germany's like oh you know you don't want to see me when I'm angry years and then you know. That happens, and you can point. I mean, <clears throat> unsuccessfully, I think, to a lot of the economic problems of Germany. But you know, liberals I, love using that as the example I guess, for Hitler. Okay, I guess one thing you can say is that you probably don't uh, like don't look at the people like right now when it comes to the Thirty Years War. But during the time when Germany like uh, had nation building efforts, because mm. like Germany was a delayed nation uh, yeah. state, also because of this <laughs> and many other reasons um but it's interesting that during like the 18 uh the 19 uh, early 1900 mm. um or 19th century i always mix that up <laughs> during the early 19th century yeah. um everyone who who was um kind of like trying to you know build a national identity etc there were a lot of reference to that time as well mm. like even Engels mentions it which is interesting yeah um later on um and um oh, now i forgot what i wanted to say well like one uh, one of the things that's mentioned in hell on earth is that there is a um, an account or like a fictionalized account of the 30 years war mm-hmm uh, um, that was like a bestseller. Like someone wrote it that was like a kid during it. Uh, he was a veteran. Uh, he lived through the whole thing. Uh, yeah, uh, his name was Grimmelshausen. Uh, yeah. The, yeah, yeah. The it's Adventures the, of Simplicitus, 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 or the hell yeah. I can't say. Simplicitus. <laughs> yeah, it's like the 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 foundational German novel, really. Like yes, it, yeah. 
And that is, yeah, actually something, yeah, I forgot good that you're mentioning this because this is actually something that was re like discovered then, you know, like mm. also during the time when they discussed on like what should Germany be, you know, yeah. when there, there were efforts we to should all read this terrifying book. We should, <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's still uh, in the canon, yeah. like when you're like a German, like literature student or like in general, it's in the German canon, this book. And it was something that was rediscovered. When people were, were talking about, you know, building a national identity, building a nation state, etc., was the reference back to the 30 year old, 30 year old, war. 30, year old <laughs> the 30 years were, well, sorry, I'm German. <laughs> this, 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 uh, this war should be able to buy a house at this point. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Some people, and I, I think maybe that is bullshit, even say that the anti French. Sentiment, yeah. <laughs> sentiments. Uh, All of sentiment. Europe has that, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, based on the Westphalia Peace Treaty. <laughs> oh, interesting. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, because wait, this is when they get Alsace, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is where. And like... I mean, it was the French, like it was. Uh, what's his name? Richelieu. Richelieu, yeah, Richelieu. Yeah. Richelieu. Yeah. yeah. And Gustav, who then built the alliance, which where people say this is not where you can see it wasn't only a confessional um, war because mm. this was a Catholic dude and a yeah, Protestant yeah, yeah. dude. And this was also about like territorial interests and Vormachtstellung. It's about sticking it to the Habsburg. <laughs> Dom who, who's dominating Europe. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And everyone hated Frederick, so. <laughs> Fair. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone hates the Habsburger. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Which okay, okay. This is this is something a bit of an insight, but Matt, have you been keeping up with the modern Habsburgs? <laughs> I know one of them loves to tweet. Yeah. Yeah. And one of them is a race car driver, I think. Yeah. Oh, there's a yeah, race that's car all I know. There's a race car driving Habsburg. It's a royal race yeah. car. Driver. The tweeting one is also. I think everyone forgets what his actual <laughs> job is. He is. Yeah. He is Hungary's representative to at the, the Vatican. Vatican City. <laughs> what? Yeah. what? Yeah, yeah. yeah, the post. It's very fitting though that those guys that those are those two guys' jobs because those are the modern equivalents of the jobs that unlanded nobles would have. You know, you either oh, diplomat. Yeah. <laughs> you, there's a church, of course, but you can either be a diplomat. Uh, or being a race car driver is basically being a knight. You know, you, you go out there in your livery with your with your colors and your standard, and you compete in the field, and you show everybody uh, that you're the better uh, athlete, and then everybody uh, throws you a big party. Did I ever tell you? Uh, like, did I on on this? No, obviously, never told Matt this. <laughs> um, when I lived in uh, Regensburg. That we went, like, I went to the, the castle there of the family that still is there. The, yeah. the family's uh, Ton and Taxis. Okay. Uh, and they are a very... Where the term taxi comes from. Yes. I used they have the, they really? the uh, imperial uh, monopoly on, uh, on the mail routes. Oh. oh, wow. I thought it came from the Greek word. <laughs> well, the Greeks always say that. <laughs> oh, but whatever. Never mind. Um, Interesting. I just assume, but then with the Greek word for taxi is spelled wrong because of the ink, because of how we spell taxi. Yeah. Fuck, damn. Yeah, it's from this. I <laughs> Holy think, yeah. shit. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, it's broken. Um, I went to the like. So the thing that then's really funny, obviously, because it is Bavaria. They're very proudly Catholic. Oh my god, they have like a they have a church on top of a church on their lands, as yeah. everyone does. You know, there's a church there. for the church. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Tiny but church. For the funniest <laughs> shit is that they obviously still live in this house, and I think that then that that of either yeah a Twitter personality poster or yeah. the race car driver because literally it was like oh and here's what they do now and they all are like either horse girls but professionally yeah or um the one son is a race car driver who then in his room has like a and i swear to god this is like it's like 15 feet tall mm. just a bust of his head <laughs> nice <laughs> i need that out of the wall <laughs> it is uh, it is insane. his own face his own face hell yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But like, okay, so I think we're being a bit unfair to the posting Habsburg because no. he is also an author. He is also a children's author. Oh, he wrote the book uh, Dubby the Double Headed Eagle. <laughs> oh 
yes. <laughs> Which um, Wait, is this an Albanian national? Yeah, no, yeah. No, it's truly an Albanian national. <laughs> no, fuck for no like I'm, I'm, I'm embodying Edward Dua Lipa right featuring Dua Lipa. Yeah, featuring yeah, the forward by Dua Lipa. I am embodying Edward Habsburg right now, being like, no, no, it's not Albanian. No, Austro-Hungarian. Obviously. Yes, <laughs> obviously. No, he's just very much a fan of the Greek patriarch. <laughs> yeah. um, Mount Athos is his dream kingdom. <laughs> where, where does that come from in Europe? Of just like, yo, eagles are sick, but imagine, imagine that they had two Dude, heads. Just, that's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool. The, the, the weirdest one is that. All right, so the 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 mascot for the Athens Football Club. Aek, or oh, yeah. A- A- I- A-E-K, <laughs> yeah. which is literally translates to then, it is not the athletic club of Athens. No, it is the athletic club of Constantinople. <laughs> yes. No. Do you know what their because, logo is? <laughs> no, no, no. But, no yeah. long, they're... they're, they're don't they they they're they're a, they're a far left wing club which is yes, even so. funnier so they have oh, okay. how how because they're all refugees from from uh from from, from or, Constantinople that's why they're called that <laughs> but their logo yeah. because of that in this the weird sense of then like the diaspora thing yeah. is the double headed eagle just it is the, the yes. double headed eagle on a yellow background and their logos are their colors are black and yellow and their their black mascot is a person in a double-headed eagle costume that runs around the <laughs> so field scary. and like does shit, but it's these two heads that are like wobbling yeah, around yeah, and yeah, it can't yeah. stay still because it's like not made right. Because obviously, no, but they need to do the. They don't have the budget the for the two heads. Yeah. Yeah. They need to do like the that like two-person horse costume. Thing. Yeah, they, oh, they, yeah, they do. Two <laughs> people in there, and it is frightening. Yeah. The problem is that I have a sweater because I like the team, but yeah. on the back of the sweater is a, it's a huge double-headed, double-headed eagle. eagle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The club's logo and the club's politics do not match, yeah. which is very uh, funny. Yeah. But yeah. Why double-headed eagles, though? Because they're cool. Yeah, because they're, <laughs> they're cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, there's a children's book written by Edward Hausberg about how we need to bring back the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, I thought it was a picture book, but it's actually an illustrated novel. Oh, yeah. it's an illustrated novel. <laughs> an illustrated novel. It's for it's for e- readers aged eight to twelve. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm a sophisticated Habsburg. No, um, okay. Is there any other German legacy stuff we need to bring up? Mm, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Good. Because I want to get into like just weird shit. Except for oh. that, the head of the I really like the head of the Protestant Church uh, that was actually bringing up the anti-Semitism during the jubi- uh, uh, jubileum yeah. um, anniversary. Unfortunately, she's not the head of the Protestant Church anymore of the Lutheran Church. Why? Driving under influence. <laughs> oh hell yes! Yes. Wait, so the head of the Protestant Church here drunk drives? Yes. That's a Catholic thing. <laughs> No, no, you gotta know. Here, the Protestants are kind of fun. Drink, drink, driving. <laughs> drink yeah, driving. Yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> no, because yeah, it's Protestantism. Oh, have you seen our Catholics? They they made a pope, and he was scary. He just died. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that singer. Yeah, that, oh yeah, that guy. The Catholics here are scary. Here, the Protestants are kind of like we <laughs> drunk driving, <laughs> drunk driving, driving. Yeah, um, but... marrying uh, same sex couples. <laughs> Oh, Stuff yeah, like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of like, yeah. They're, 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 they're on the, the bleeding edge of um, drunk driving rights. Um, okay, so there is just other shit from the Thirty Years' War I want to bring up. Other, mm-hmm. like, various things I got reminded of while listening to Hell on Earth. Um, about two years ago, I became obsessed with Thirty Years' War because of a particular book series. Matt, have you ever heard of the um, 1632 book series? Yes, I never read them, uh, but I, I have heard of them. It, it's a pretty wild premise. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, the 1632 series by Eric Flint is about if a town in West Virginia gets teleported back to the Thirty Years' War in the middle of Turingia. Uh, oh, uh, Turingen? Uh, Turingen. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. What comes up with that? <laughs> that, that a guy who has written like a million books and is probably still not making a living off of it. He's just like one of those like sci-fi fantasy writers who can just crank out a new yeah. book every year, but it doesn't pay the bills. Okay, so Matt was like talking about earlier the problems of literacy. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe like... We get everyone to read this. <laughs> yeah, maybe this will have, you know, people reconsidering uh, the... Maybe people shouldn't have too many thoughts floating around the heads and the ability. I think to this write sounds interesting. I want to know more. Yeah. So, like, <laughs> you know, spoilers for the first book, but like the Habsburgs send in the like the Croats to deal with this West Virginian town, and they just all have like 
semi-automatic guns. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> Wait, the Virginia town. Yeah, people. the West of Virginia. Of course, they're yeah. from fucking West Virginia. Yeah, okay, <laughs> and they call it, so they transport back to 1632 with modern everything. Yeah, the whole town. Like, the infrastructure, the oh. pipes and electricity underneath. And then a bunch of Croatians. Yeah, comes the Croats. Yeah, the, the, the <laughs> Croatian cavalry, yeah. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, and it, it becomes it Wait, kind so of... they do what like Australia did with like the the, the, em- the emus, emu war, <laughs> but with a, a population emus. of a Central European. Well, in what is then to well, become a modern Central the, the European cavalry of that country. Yes, because uh, uh, um, but yeah, no, it, it's, brutal. It's, it's they start building Jeez. socialism because like the there's no government except for like the miners' union. That's, huh. like, left over from the West Virginian town. Okay, nice. So okay. they become the... Yeah, <laughs> I, I, the author, Eric Flint, was a union organizer for years. Oh, yeah. Okay, we like it. Oh, okay, yeah. cool. I take back everything as I said. A, yeah, yeah. As I <laughs> yeah. said, we it love sounds this. interesting. We love Come on. Yeah. I'm, I'm reading, like, the third one of the main series at the moment. So They're trying to build planes. To, <laughs> like, but, like, how... Uh, did they explain how they got back in time? Is it just um, a random thing? Is yeah, it it, a, they explain that it's just like... Glitch in the... No, it's, it's the side effect <laughs> of like this advanced alien race just doing art. It just randomly sends back a, p- a piece of the oh, present to the past. <laughs> so it's like a blip. Like it's, a, like it's, a, it's a mistake by uh-huh. like some aliens. I would be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd be so mad as, if I could back into... Like send <laughs> back to 13 What the fuck? Years. It smells here. <laughs> what, Germany? Um... All right, yeah, and this is this is the like book that got me interested in things like the the something you've mentioned on the Ten Years' War as well, which is the Croats as like this elite cavalry unit, as well as the it's a Finnish word, so bear with me, Hakapalita. Hakapalita, yeah, yeah, which is uh, Gustav's uh, uh, cavalry unit uh, of yeah. um, Finns. Uh, Gustav. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure, Matt. Did you ever read any of the like? like the 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 accounts written by the hakapalita um because there was some ones i found there where like they're basically all rolling their eyes at this swedish man saying there's only one god yeah the finns were like barely christian at that point they're mostly yeah. uh mostly pagan in fact when sweden during the same period was uh trying to do their own north american settlement uh, New Sweden in what is now Delaware in the United States. Nice. It was this thick morass of of uncleared forest, and so they sent to clear it a bunch of Finns who were forest dwellers. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> as soon as the Finns got to New Sweden and made contact with the local Native Americans, they were just like, "Oh, you guys like trees too? Cool!" and just joined them. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> and now there's still just like a, a, a an indigenous tribe in America, just like all in the Finnish like, people. They just have like just you know murals and stuff of like black metal album covers, of everyone posing in the yeah. forest in all black. Yeah, the the Croats. Uh, you can blame them for why if you go to a funeral, you got to wear a tie. Uh, the yeah. the they were called the Cravatan, and a they Cravaten. had these bright red. Uh, cravats around their neck which over time became fashionable in europe and got whittled down to the necktie yeah oh that's so funny because that is a word we use yeah, the german word is cravatte yeah, yeah it yeah. comes from those croats ro- running around germany cutting everyone's heads off oh nice. damn they look They're good looking though. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, yeah. and the Finns and the croats were the ones that if you were a peasant you didn't want to encounter because they were the most linguistically alien like they they were gonna have the hardest time communicating with you. So they were most likely to just cut through everything and, and lop your head off and take your grain. Yeah. The, uh, if you ever, great. if you ever visit like Croatia today, they are very proud of the fact that they invented the tie or can take some sort I've of cra- been to Croatia. They, they have like <laughs> in the middle of like split, which is, I am. Yeah. Great city built in like an old Roman general's house. So it's just like ancient Roman architecture. And there's just like a gap in the middle of it. Um, very strange city in that regard, but there is just like a bunch of like, hey, we invent the tie. Come buy these very overpriced ties uh, um, from us in Split. So yeah, they're very proud of that. Um, yeah. Um, then I want to talk a little bit about. So I'm actually going to ask Uma about this because Uma, you are from, you know, Iberia, and you have <laughs> yes. you have experience with Ireland. Um, mm-hmm. Are you aware of the fact that, like, every tanned person in Ireland or any Irish person with sallow skin 
is considered to be like descendant of someone who crashed in the Spanish Armada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Even <laughs> though like they're from the other side of the island. Yeah, no, absolutely. They're like, makes yeah, zero yeah, sense. yeah, they're Spanish. They're Spanish for sure. Yeah. So this is just, <laughs> this is the long-standing idea that uh, um, everyone who is got brown hair in Ireland is secretly Spaniard. Like to be fair, it's true that the survivors like the irish um sheltered the survivors and you yeah. know nursed them and whatever but like there yeah. were like five survivors and, then they like, started fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and now we have some kids. like good catholics they had like 12 kids yeah and, absolutely you know. um yeah because I, I i do love the like just this weird uh thing that's just not true <laughs> um but also actually sorry there was something that when i mentioned we were doing this episode Yulia, you immediately messaged me about <laughs> uh, Schwedentrunk? Schwedentrunk, yeah. Okay. Matt, do you know what that is? Oh, the Swedish drink, yeah, of course. Yes, nice. Okay. <laughs> okay who wants to reveal? <laughs> Matt, what, what's your understanding of the Swedish drink? It's so it's one cup. <laughs> early form of waterboarding used to torture peasants into giving up their secreted loot, and it's wedging open someone's mouth with a board. And then pouring a slurry of manure, urine, and water down their throat. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. This was a very popular torture method. <laughs> yeah. During and the as the name war. implies, was pioneered by the Swedes, who yes. were the military pioneers in a lot of ways during the war. And then torture is one of them. Yeah, it's very fascinating how oh, like psychos. involved there were back then. Now that you think about the Swedish, you know, but back then they used to <laughs> love war. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Bro, torture. would you rather Sweden drink or a Colombian next time? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, they're, they're very... I was surprised after the invasion of Ukraine that it was Finland and Sweden who were like, we're joining NATO and, I, and Austria is the one holding out. I was a bit surprised by that personally. Uh, um... The other thing I wanted to mention, uh, um, actually, just wanted to ask Uma if you knew anything more about this. <laughs> um, the Reaper Wars? Oh, Yeah, that was a uh, revolt in Catalonia uh, that occurred when uh, the Spanish state, which by that point had been fighting uh, France for years and had been fighting the Dutch for 60 years and, and had, was involved in the, the uh, Thirty Years' War in Germany – uh, this whole time, the war was increasingly being – the cost of the war and the uh, provisioning of soldiers of the war was being borne more and more by the central Spanish states, Andal uh, like Castile, uh, Andalusia. And Catalonia, which you know, prized its independence, w was very standoffish and their, uh, their government refused to supply money or troops to the central government. And as a way to – get the Catalans to pe pull their weight, the uh, Spanish sent an army into Catalonia with the idea that they would gather troops and supplies there for an invasion of France. And in so doing, they rubbed the local population the wrong way At the, because during this period, uh, troops, there were there was no real infrastructure to quarter and supply troops outside of civilian infrastructure. So troops would be uh, put in people's homes uh, this is why the U.S. has a Third Amendment, which a lot of people look at now and they go, what, what quartering troops? What is this? That was a real uh, imposition by governments uh, in the early modern period. Uh, and the local uh, Catalans got fed up with it. And there was a revolt that began in Barcelona by these itinerant farm laborers called Reapers uh, who killed the local uh, viceroy and expelled the Spanish leaders. And it led to a... Uh, half decade long war with the central Spanish authority. The French invaded to support the Catalans An independent Catalan Republic was declared. Uh, and this led to sort of a whack-a-mole for the Spanish because to put down the Reaper war, they requested that the Portuguese send an army. Uh, and Portugal was also not happy with being part of the Spanish Imperial Iberian union and they used that request as a pretext to have their own revolt and overthrow the Spanish. And uh, the reason that Portugal is an independent country today, which you look at the map and you kind of wonder, how did that happen, is because uh, eventually Spain, with its declining revenue and state capacity, was forced to choose uh, which part of their territory to recapture. And they put their focus on getting back Catalonia, which they succeeded 
in doing at the cost of letting Portugal go. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, actually, our because I'm, I'm obviously Matt. You don't know, but I'm Catalan, and our national anthem is literally called the Reapers of oh, Santos, yeah. oh. and it's based on this. And there's actually a metal version of, oh, of our course. national anthem. <laughs> I mean, it's a very we say it in the show. It's an incredibly metal sounding war, the Reapers it is. war. <laughs> yeah, but like the, our national anthem itself is like, you know, the enemy will tremble when they see our symbols beautiful. raised. Like it's so honestly, like, I mean, obviously in Catalan and whatever, but it's so beautiful to hear. Like, <laughs> so beautiful to hear <laughs> no, fighting the like, Spanish. <laughs> everyone's just like, yeah, fuck the Spanish. Like, look, you know. And there's a, yeah, the, the metal... they would have shows in Portugal. You could. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man, but. Yeah, and then like the metal version is in English. If you guys want to, because it's it, like when you find out that's actually someone's national anthem, you're like, what the fuck? Nice. <laughs> like someone. Actually I already think the French has a n- have a nice one. Nah, ours is better. Uh, <laughs> like, I, when it comes I, to brutality, I mean. <laughs> oh yeah. Sure. Well, that, that was I was looking like Google Translate version of like the Catalan Wikipedia page for this war, mm-hmm. and it translates it as the War of the Mowers. Mower. Oh. <laughs> that sucks. Yeah, that sucks. A bunch of guy on uh, guys on John Deere tractors just driving around. <laughs> to be fair, that's like the brand that we use in Catalonia, and we call it John Deere. <laughs> John Deere, yeah, absolutely. And it's like a thing that like all farmers aspire to have John Deere. Yeah, <laughs> because of this primal connection. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sorry, we also had pattern wars, and nobody wrote a fucking answer about Sorry, that. Sorry, no. You had like twelve. <laughs> yeah, they they were they were concise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I think that's I think that's everything. You don't want to talk about the Westphalian peace treaty? Oh god, yeah, go for the Westphalian peace treaty. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I just want to mention a oh, shout out. Oh to... <laughs> yes, mention the fact that it's yes, yeah, absolutely about yeah Münster. How how the population during the treaty conference basically. Um, doubled in size of the city of Münster and Osnabrück. Yeah. Like back then it was 10,000, then it was 20,000. And that was because a lot of people, like jesters, like artists, etc., came to the city. Yes. Uh, also sex work. Yes. <laughs> so basically, and that is what Kieran said, turning Münster. It's Davos. Into the Davos it's, of its, its Davos. time. <laughs> it's become Davos. <laughs> There's like the population doubles and a lot of its sex workers. It's Davos. Or Davos. Barcelona during like the World Mobile Congress. Yeah. <laughs> which is this week. <laughs> oh, it is in Spain. And I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it took Barcelona. like, it was a, con- a Congress that was, uh, it was like negotiations that were going on for five years. Yeah. Uh, especially also, what was it? Because they didn't know the seating arrangement. Oh, in the six be- months <laughs> for seating arrangement. Yeah, I mean, yeah. that is difficult. You got to decide who you want to sit next to. For yeah. the next five years. No, also so they don't kill <laughs> each you. other during the... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, because, like, I mean, messages were slow. So you would only know, like, late, later on what was happening on the battlefield. So, like, maybe something you negotiated was were fine with was changed by something that <laughs> was, actually yeah. happened because they did some shit over Which there am- in the battlefield. Oh. Which American war ends and then has one more battle? And I think it is the Battle of New Orleans. Is it the War of 1812? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that it ends. Yes. The War of 1812. Sorry, ends. I didn't hear that we had a peace treaty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They hadn't heard yet that this oh, treaty had been signed, and uh, so uh, that's the that's the battle that really makes Andrew Jackson's reputation. It's him yeah. and a, a press one, gang militia get peace. together and just absolutely annihilate a bunch of uh, British soldiers who. <laughs> just march towards them and then have to stand around waiting for their uh, their uh, siege ladders to come around and just get completely owned. We actually, uh, there was a song written about the Battle of New Orleans that became a number one hit in, I think, 1960 or 61. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. By a guy named Johnny Horton. Uh, that This is before the Beatles showed up in America. Half of the popular songs were... Uh, novelty tunes about uh, battles of some kind, uh, and the other ones, the other half were uh, uh, songs about meeting creatures. Uh, but yeah, it's got uh, a great chorus. It's we fired our guns and the British kept it coming, but there wasn't as many as there was a while ago. Oh, gee. yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, top forty hit, Billboard one hundred, yeah. absolutely. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh, that's beautiful. That is. Great. I wish I would have lifted Minster during that. No. <laughs> oh, it would have been no. lit. <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone's yeah. there. Jesus. Dude, yeah, you're the vibe up. would have been immaculate. Oh. <laughs> Hanging out with all the jesters, and doing the... some Schweden drunk, oh. <laughs> oh, God. doing ke- doing, doing, doing Swedish do doing Swedish keg stands. <laughs> yeah, exactly. God. Hanging out with some Croats. <laughs> and we would say fuck Osnabrück. Münster is a real uh, Westphalian piece. Oh, yeah, do you think a rivalry like yeah, who's the better sure. party city during the the the, the treaty negotiations occur? <laughs> They're very close to each other. With the train, it's uh, half an hour, so maybe people were going back and forth uh, depending. Yeah. On... Oh, in Osnabrück they walk like this, but here in Münster, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We fucking party. Wait, isn't Osnabrück still in a different state? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it is. Oh, okay, I was wondering. Well, it was all this failure. No, 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 I know, but I'm just like, I'm. That's like the <laughs> yeah, one. Yeah, now they are Lower Saxony. Like, yeah, the but... border is like misdrawn, so that then also oh, doesn't. Yeah, that is all of... very random. Pretty yeah. random. <laughs> also, Brick wanted to, had to be a part of yeah. Lower Saxony, and I'm that's why they did some the weird shit of, here. Have I been there before? <laughs> yes, I have, and I don't know why, and it's because. Probably the train. Yeah, that is the train. <laughs> oh yeah, like the reason everyone's been to Hanover. The, it's the a train, train stopped here. Exactly. I love going to the Messe the reason... Deutschland. Always. What are you talking about? The reason why everyone should go to Lerner is the train. <laughs> the train capital of Europe. Well, no, uh, no. of Germany. But... But... <laughs> well, it was a very important train station during World War One. <laughs> <laughs> you can <laughs> you can hear it in the movie and the book. Not, uh, all quiet on the Western Front. Oh, okay. That's um, how important yeah. Luna is. <laughs> Fair enough. Right. Oh, joke. Well, that has been great. Uh, Matt, thank you very much for coming on. Uh, yeah, thank you for having me. I think you didn't hear you. Oh, you didn't hear me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what? I did not hear you. <laughs> no, that's fair. Uh, where can people find you? The internet, generally. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kushbaum uh, at Twitter is my main hub. Hmm. And episode eight of uh, um, Hell on Earth came out today. How many more have you got coming out? We've got two more of the scripted episodes, and then we're going to have five bonus interview episodes where we fill in some stuff that we weren't able to talk about. Like we have an episode about the Ottomans and what's happening with them at this time. Hmm. have an episode about the daily life among the different classes of uh, early modern Europe and uh, special uh, one about uh, the economic underpinnings and financial structure. Uh, and we have one about war, uh, the specifics <laughs> of, of combat with uh, the war nerd. So yeah, oh, that's, that's going to come as soon as we finish the, the main ep- main series. Well, I learned some sick thirty year war combat tactics. <laughs> <laughs> become an operator. Yeah, become a become a become a, a, a tier one, you know, Croat, uh, uh, Croat <laughs> operator. Well, I mean, it was it was such a early phase. You know, uh, uh, firearms were so relatively new that yeah. you could really blow people literally blow people away with things that seemed pretty uh, intuitive. Like the sweet one of the things that the Swedes brought to battle that was initially very devastating is they uh, trained to produce synchronized volley fire, which you'd think, duh, but nobody else had really gotten that down yet. And so they were able to win a lot of early battles that way. But then that created its own innovation when uh, the Spanish and the Imperials eventually realized that you could just duck. (laughs) (laughs) These pro tips and more. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just uh, uh, today found out that they actually had muskets in during the war. Oh, and yeah? Said, yeah, I thought everyone was fighting with swords. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, sounds like a sword thing to me. I mean, they throw people More out like of a, fence, a spear, uh, out of like, windows. And yeah, yeah. They yeah. Ask come on. <laughs> was the, it, there were swordsmen, but the, the main things were, were muskets and then pikes. Big, long, ah, pointy yeah. sticks. That's the word, not yeah. spear. Pike. Spear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pikes. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's something else. Halberds. That was another one, right? Ah, uh, yes, halberds. By 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 uh, by the uh, Thirty Years' War, halberds were mostly ceremonial. But they, yeah. in the like late Middle Ages, the Swiss kind of revolutionized war in Europe with their use of halberd tactics. They w- were able to do these. Uh, incredibly fast charges with with halberds and just hack at people and became the most sought after 
military force and Swiss mercenaries became the most valuable military commodity during the period. And then it created this whole uh, market for German knockoff uh, mercenaries, like German Landsknechts were, were, they were who you could get if you couldn't afford the Swiss. Yeah, and they oh, and, wow. no, and they become a massive thing that then uh, made in uh, Germany. No, that then comes during the American uh, War of Independence and shit like that. Huh? Like, yeah, well, like the Hessians. Like, yeah, the Hessians were like massive mercenaries oh, and shit funny. like that. Yeah. Well, also yeah. there was and also in other conflicts too around. I mean, in a lot of ways, Germany is Switzerland if you can't afford Switzerland. <laughs> I mean, Very expensive. Uh, uh, th- what's cool about Germany and the German lands in general is that it's a lot like uh, Pandora in that you've got different ter- territorial types of Germans. You've got the Swiss mountain Germans and the Austrian mountain Germans and the uh, the Dutch swamp Germans, uh, the yeah. Bavarian forest Germans, the Pomeranian <laughs> Uh, sand Germans. <laughs> yeah, it's actually so what crazy in the sense about how this. I mean, like, I know that we've like more or less. I mean, this is me. I don't know, being dumb, but I, I, I feel just from the perspective of that, then it always kind of seems that the like up until far recently that there was always like the German military or like German military units always still kind of ish did that up until like really recently. Or you still have like some sort of local hyper special. Yeah. Like the Swiss were like notoriously known for like, you know, good marksmen and shit like that. They still have a massive guns industry for that reason as well. But a lot of it you could see had to do with the sense of that, just how they militarily developed in their region. So on, so on and so forth. And it's like also explains why like to like Lithuania now invests more just like entirely in special forces. Mm. than their actual stuff because their whole like legacy of like fighting in the forest and this and that and that and they're like that was always like i don't know you can like look at like european like individual european modern armies and like see that thing that then's like a little bit too left over from i mean now you know modern warfare exists in a different sense but even like you know when you see it to like world war one to world war two these things that then were like still existing in the German military, especially that the German military is like, especially with Hitler being just like a fanatic of nerd shit. Mm. It was like, oh, we have to like maintain all these things, you know, these like hyper specialized weird groups of like, you know, whatever, like, I don't know, just like, you know, special mountaineer troops yeah, or some alpinists. shit. So, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Which then end up becoming then attached to a lot of like paratrooper things and whatnot in the nazi military and shit there's and a they scene get in their, Band of Brothers. exactly and they get their fucking asses kicked in uh in no. uh no 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 in where is it is it crete yeah, yeah. and then they never use them again mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah oh yeah because that's that's the, the, the local population just starts shooting up with them. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Hitler, hitler never did another like para drop which is kind of funny but no i know that that's a little still a side tangent <laughs> but that to me, like I don't know, still existed in Europe for a very long well, yeah, time. Well, like when you're like Hitler and you believe in like race science, of course, different yeah. types of Germans are like Pokemon and they have special abilities. I know, but it wasn't the, the Nazis weren't the only ones doing this. <laughs> right, is sure, what I'm sure, saying yeah, is, yeah. you know, or like you had like the Cossacks who were just like notoriously known for just being like insane, mm. you know, and you could literally just like I don't know, yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah, one thing I forgot to mention mm. is, and then we'll end. <laughs> uh, yeah, that we had. It, uh, the Thirty Year War brought us sick pro- poetry in Germany. Oh right, okay. Yes, really cool. Drop some stuff. bars, <laughs> <laughs> like Andreas Gryphius and his Tränen des Vaterlandes. Anno, uh, oh, I don't know which one. No, but uh, the Tears of the f- of the Fatherland. Yes, oh, yes. Gosh. It's a lot about like plagues and death, and it wasn't a fuck <laughs> thing. It's vanitas, <laughs> like vanitas. That's where mm. the like these like concepts were created about like car- carpe diem vanitas and shit like that, saying like everything dies, you know. So you gotta seize enjoy, the seize the seize moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the motivational um, posters of <laughs> the thirty years German war. motivational posters. Everything dies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, and with that, uh, thanks again, Matt, for coming on. And yeah, we Thank will you. see you next week. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye, bye. Bye, bye, everyone. <laughs>